Welcome back, fellow shop rats. Today we are back on the Stitches Challenger. One job that I have been putting off for a while is getting this cross member prepped and installed back in the car. And part of the reason I've done that is because I just haven't done it. So we're going to work on that today. We got to figure out some fitment and some dimensioning, and there's going to be maths and stuff, maybe. Well, at least a tape measure, so don't go away. I might. This is my car's shop. It's been a while since we've worked on this car, so again, it seems like any flat surface in the shop just accumulates stuff, so we've got to take some stuff off. The other thing I want to do is because I'm working on this end of the car, I need to switch around my locking mechanism to here and lock the one on the other end so that I can turn the car from this end rather than from that end. So, you know, it's kind of cool to have it in a different place and a little different position to do some different, different things. No, same things, just different spot. Hopefully we got everything. It's a little different because I've not actually rotated it from this end before, but now we are. It's different. Not that it's any heavier on this end than that end. That's not the point. It's just different. Uh, I don't have my trajectories figured out. It still needs to go more. <sighs> All right. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> it's like doing something left-handed when you're right-handed. Well, the first thing I didn't remember was whether or not I had actually treated or painted this under here. And I'm guessing, yeah, this looks like it's painted to me. But even if it's only in rust conditioner, it'll be okay. Although we might go ahead and hit it one more time with some of that satin black. Um, I was thinking I was going to shoot this with that stuff first, but I don't think I'm going to. Um... Oh, yeah, we're going to lizard skin the bottom of this car when I'm done with the floor. But, um, hem and ha, um, 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 you know, I'm making lots of noise and not saying anything. I left, so, so this, how do I put it? Down here, I left the, the marks in there where the original cross member was. On this side, it's a brand new frame rail. That's part of the reason I didn't replace that chunk of frame was it just made it a lot easier for me to know where it went on that side. Although, you know, it gets centered in here. Um, but, I, you know, I didn't have any marks up here. So I'm going to go get that cross member and we're going to just do a little test fit. So it's in there like a ragu. It's not fitting perfectly because it needs a little trim. There's a, it's cold and I can tell because there's a burr here. That was a bad pun. Um, and I also knew that hand fabricating this frame rail, I probably wasn't going to get things perfect. But it falls into place actually pretty well, all things considered. So what I need to do is just get a tape measure out and measure it back. Um, and get a determination on exactly where this end up here needs to go. I know this is a little that way, but I can bang that into shape pretty good. That end is close. It looks like it's, uh, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch off. So let me uh, do some cogitating on that and I'll be right back. Need to remember to put the other suspension stop down there too so I don't lose it. It's over here in my clear container. We're binding on something, I'm not sure what yet. I don't think it's that because the frame is too close together, it could be, if that's the case, we can shave the 16th of an inch off the other end down there, because I, I, yeah, anyway, I did stuff. Uh, but I want to get a light over here and shine in and see what's going on. I see what it is. I just need to bend these tabs. There's, there's little tabs. I need to bend those down more. That'll give me just a little clearance. And there might be a, a goober weld right there also that I need to grind off from where I've joined this frame rail together because I haven't dressed these welds yet. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to, quite frankly. The car is stitches. 
and I don't care if you see stitches around the car. I really couldn't care less about that. It'll go in there now, I'm quite sure. The weld is actually just beyond, well, it's interfering a little bit. So we may want to grind that down, but the weld is actually this side of where this needs to go, I think. Um, that side is just about perfectly in place. So let's uh, do a little measure. 31, which is what I guessed it was, 31. So we're right in spot right now. So that's good. It feels like this is interfering here with my little rubber baby buggy bumper, but I think it's because this end of this is twisted a little bit. Let me get my, uh, my light again, take a peek. This is, yep, that's what's going on right there. It, uh, it is the weld itself. So what I'm going to have to do is spin the car, take my grinder, go in there and grind that weld off. And uh, then we can get this test fitted. Better. Okay, I got her spun the other way now so we can come in here and uh, take a look at, take a look at myself. I'm just an empty face, is that what it is? Oh yeah, we got a goober right there I couldn't see. So I need to get my and uh Let's see, that's the cut end there, so you go here. That's the non-cut end, so you go there. Still a little on the tight side. Let me get, um, boom. We're close. Like I said, this fabricated frame mail, I might have made it just a little bit thicker than the factory one, so I expected to have some, you know, not major issues, but just going to have to spend a little time fitting things. But I, I would say that even if you used, uh, you know, AMD re replacement rails and you didn't get them in the exact position, you're going to have the same issue. So as long as you're not off by a lot, and of course we're not, we're, we're only looking at a, you know, 16th to an eighth of an inch here. So we're fine. close we're 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 off to see the wizard now we're we're off just to Nova Scotia less than a quarter of an inch I'm not sure why it won't there's nothing I can see that it's hitting on but it will not pop up in there any further than that and my line here Oh, I see why. I need to bend that right there. That's why. Okay, I got it. There's a little ramp there because of where the two pieces of the frame came together where I made it. So I just need to knock that just a, just a little bit. And this end is just falling like it wants to be there. It's perfect. There we go. I think we're good. That took care of that issue. I'll have to go in here and knock that in place. But I'll do that after I get it tacked in place. But we're at 30 inches to the edge there. 30 inches to the edge yeah a little bit more than 30 yeah you can see it needs to go just a little teeny bit um, this is almost interfering with that bumper stop there this one's bent but you can see how close they were so that's about right this needs to go like I said just uh, 
probably that much right there. Let's find a spot to measure. And this is just ballparking. Oh, uh, there we go. 30 and an eighth. 30 and an eighth. So we're good. All right. So now we got it in there. I'm going to take a marker. Mark on this end where it goes. And then we can start doing some cleanup work. So I drew a couple lines down there. We're good. Now we can break this thing out of here. Actually, yeah, we're okay. okay. Well, there we go. Okay, I took a second to just throw that in there, partly because I'm going to want to know where that exactly is when we're putting this in, but also because I um, just... It's been kicking around here a long time, and I was afraid I was going to lose it. The screws or the bolts were always with it, and of course, can't find those. I think when I did this one, I actually welded quarter-inch nuts into the frame. But again, this is the only piece of the original frame still on this car. So um, this still has just the, the tapered, you know, sheet metal type screws in it. So anyway, I got that in place. So we're good now to start going over there and getting this cleaned up uh, we're going to pop our fuel line off etc etc okay that's not coming off with one hand and then we'll start wire brushing this down and getting it cleaned up i'm not going to bother sandblasting it we're going to rust treat it anyway so it'll be just fine all right so the next step now and the day is getting away from me i just ended up with a business meeting that i wasn't expecting even though it's the weekend that normally doesn't happen but it was an important meeting we needed to have so anyway we're going to get this cleaned up and um, go from there. So let's get it done. Well, that was pretty funny. I just spent a fair whack of time walking around the shop trying to find this little cup wire brush. Looked in all the usual places where I would suspect it to be. Scratch my head, scratch my head. One place I didn't look was in the clear container next to the lathe, which is the first place I should have looked. That container is 99% empty. I didn't remember seeing it in there when I put stuff away, and I know why I didn't. Um, put this away and left it in there because I wasn't sure where I was ultimately going to keep it yet. I think I've got a couple different little wire wheels for the drill. I think I'm going to put them in the drawer with all my drill bits. I'm going to call that the drawer of spinny stuff. This is spinny stuff. So drill bits, wire brushes, all that stuff will be in that drawer. So any place I'm looking for spinny stuff, it'll be in the drawer. That makes sense to me. It doesn't have to make sense to you. So we got it all de-rustified and we're going to wipe it down with Prepsol now and shoot it with some of that rust conditioner to just convert any of the rust, seal it so that it will not continue to corrode. Now understand that I'm not saying this rust converter converts it to something else, but it does make it a paintable surface that seals so that you can um, paint over it and you don't ever have to worry about it rusting for a long time, ever for a long time. Mix a lot. Go. As soon as that dries, we'll go ahead and shoot that rust converter, flip it over, wipe down the other side, and get that shot also. It's a really nice piece. I'm really pleased with the way that looks. Gonna let that dry a little bit so when I flip it, it doesn't wipe everything off. And uh, then we'll flip it over and get the other side shot. Then we'll let that dry before we hit it with just the regular satin black paint. So there we go on that one. It's uh, missed a spot. It's all cleaned up and just gotta wait for this to dry before we can shoot it with some paint. So here's where I'm at with this. I'm gonna paint it 
here in a little bit. This stuff dries pretty quick. But I realized that my instincts are telling me not to install it in the car yet. We got to put the trunk floor in. I can't imagine there's going to be any issue, but when that little voice inside says, eh, don't get ahead of yourself, you're not, it's not essential to put that back in the car yet, I've learned that I better listen. We'll test fit it one more time once it's all dried and painted and everything, but I think uh, wisdom says, eh, we know it goes in good, we know it lines up, we know everything's copacetic and it's not so pathetic. We better just get it painted, let it dry, test fit it one more time and then set it aside until we get the trunk floor in, which is going to be happening real soon. And there we go. Just like downtown, it's just not as crowded. So that's a good little job done. I ended up having another hour meeting I wasn't planning on, but I got some new business development stuff on a new opportunity that I'm working on, so that needed to happen. But I think this looks outstanding. So this has got to dry for you know, a while. And uh, I need to make a decision on whether I'm going to shoot that under there one more time with paint. I think I might as well. Certainly not going to hurt anything. So I went ahead and hit that one more time because that's going to be covered up and I want to be darn sure that we have good protection there. So now everything's got to dry. So um, I'm going to leave this. We'll come back to this tomorrow and we'll do a final test fit, make sure everything looks good. But I'm really happy. I have no reason to believe it's not going to, but I'm just excited to see it in place. So I've got to uh, go away here in a little bit. We've got a concert to attend this evening. No, it's not a rock concert, but still good stuff. Uh, it's a cultural happening is what I'm trying to say. So that'll do it for today. We'll be right back tomorrow. Don't go away. Well, here I am in the shop again. It's the next day, and this is all nice and dry, so we're going to go test fit it in the car and make sure that everything is uh, copacetic and not so pathetic. Turned out nice. Um, got a couple little on it, but I'm not worried about that because we can once it's in the car and touch it up. Plus, we're going to be shooting that thing with lizard skin if the money comes to be able to do that so uh good to go let's get it over there come on let's get it over there let's go come on let's go all right let's see what we got okay this end goes there but like so because i got my little lines down there and i got my little something up here off oh, let's try putting it up this end first all right there we go and then we'll, there we go. Well, what the heck? Apparently the car shrunk overnight. Because yesterday, this thing was tighter than a tight thing. And today, it won't stay in there. And I haven't done anything to it. It's cold out here, but it ain't that cold. There we go. Well, I hate to leave it. I may have to get a clamp, but I, I'm kind of I'm puzzled. Why is that? Well, I'll be dipped. And I know this ear is bent. It's got to be way over here, but... It's right where she goes, right there. <laughs> that is hilarious. There we go. All right, there we go. Close enough. Yep, looks good. Looks nice and straight. Might be... It might be just a little bit that way on the top, but uh, we don't have this quite lined up where it needs to be. The tabs are still on the frame from where I cut it out, and I'm just going to weld that back together again, and then we'll run beads or tacks up in here. It doesn't have to be terribly strong. It does need to handle the rebound of the shock. Um, you know, this way doesn't matter when the suspension goes this way, but the shock is going to put pressure on it this way, so we obviously don't want it to rip out. Um, so we'll get it in there good, but uh, yeah, it's nice. I like it. Okay, so like I said, this is uh, still on here, and I'm just going to weld that 
to it. This ear needs to be bent. I'm not going to do that now, but it looks good. And I've got my line down here exactly where that's supposed to be. And we're in like Flynn. And uh, I'll probably drill some holes in here to plug weld that. But uh, I don't think I want to go any further farther. I think we're good for now. And that's something I've been wanting to get done for a long time. And I had just enough time yesterday to get it done. One giant bite for stitches. One small step for MKS. <sighs> fuel tank, or excuse me, fuel line clips need to be done. So we're going to throw those in the blast cabinet. And get them cleaned up next. Simple little job, but it's got to be done. And it's one less thing to do later. And if I don't put them back in the cross member now, I will lose them. And there's a pro tip for you in your blast cabinet for little parts. Just put a little tray in, in there, I'm using a coffee can lid, and just hold your stuff while you're uh, getting stuff set up so you don't lose it down in the sand. And there we go, all blasted up, so we'll hit them with some rust conditioner and give them a shot of paint. Woohoo! So much winning, I can hardly stand it. Just like that, all painted up, ready to go. I'm totally sure that's the wrong color, they were probably silver, I don't care. Remember, the purpose of paint is to keep it from rusting, and I'm pretty sure that black will do that just as good as silver will. So, and besides that, then the silver fuel line will contrast nicely right there, in my opinion. So, good to go. I'm not disappointed with that. So, that has to dry for a day, and then we'll get it snapped in out of the way. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for coming along on the journey. I know it's not any major, big, exciting thing, but this is the real world. This is the real world of trying to find time to work on things and make little bites and little progress. And the thing about the bite philosophy is it isn't necessarily seeing something through from beginning to end. I got that cross member painted yesterday, but I had to wait for it to dry. I could have left that and not come back today to finish this episode. I just wanted to finish it for you and show you what it was going to look like once it was in the car. I'm holding off on putting that in the car because we're going to get the trunk floor in in the next month or so. And I, I just feel like I want to wait to put that in until the trunk floor is securely in the car. And then we'll get that cross member put in at the same time. All right, that'll do it for this one. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. And we will. I said that already, didn't I? Yeah. Apparently, we're going to catch you on the next one. I'll be here. You should too. All right, that'll do it. Oh, <laughs> Wow! <laughs>